Okay, we have Neil Rosen in the house. In the house, Mr. Rosen. With, with Toto. Toto. Oh, Toto in hand. How are you? Hell, thank this you. This dog, Toto, this one right here was actually owned by Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> He's 23 years old, and uh, when Elvis got a little too heavy to chase women and always started buying dogs, and this was the last dog that he bought, and I bought it from Colonel Parker three years ago <laughs> for a can of Spam. <laughs> so, um, Toto... <laughs> <laughs> What's new, guy? Good to see you, Neil. Okay. Oh, man. Hi, Colonel. Uh, <laughs> Always a hard bargain there, Colonel. Yeah, really. Okay. Hey, so that this is the total that's, that's playing in the, in, the, in the show. Yeah, this is the Toto who's going to be in Wizard of Oz starting Thursday. And uh, he's been trained for this role. And... Uh, so far, he doesn't come, he doesn't sit, he doesn't lie down, but he knows how to dig a hole. <laughs> <laughs> he won't be real nice like, on the stage of the Fraunthal. He won't he's like. going to try and do that on the Fraunthal <laughs> stage. He's going to dig a hole. and uh, He won't wait on Captain Kangaroo's leg or anything, will he? No, but he's no. waiting on Neil's leg right now. <laughs> <laughs> but he's supposed, to, uh, he's supposed to eat a sausage that... Uh, that uh, Professor Marvel, who's one of the characters the captain plays, he's got to steal that sausage, so we haven't tried that yet. Okay, all right. Now, now this, this dog is trained by who? This dog is trained. Uh, we brought in a, a dog trainer from uh, Milwaukee, and uh, he's been working with him for about 11 weeks. And the, the, and, beer, the uh, beer obviously helps. That's right. Right, he gets a little... <laughs> About eight ounces of beer a day, and uh, he's uh, he's feeling he's, good. Any spam at all, or no? No, no, no. We I don't hope. feed him Ooh, that crap. Does he yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any beer he prefers? You know, any favorite beers he has? He like he likes Heineken's. <laughs> I'm not touching that. Oh, I'm not touching that. One. Oh, I'm not touching that. One. Now the world, the world goes round. We were talking a little bit to to Bill about it. Now he he said he saw it twice now, and he wants to see it a third time because he said it's really a, a marvelous. It's performance. a great show. Yeah, it's two, today at two and eight, two shows, and uh, the five perf uh, actors are just wonderful. And it's very different. It's a lot of music that people will sit. Oh, I didn't realize that. Uh, Canner and Ebb, who are the uh, music uh, writer and lyricist, wrote like Cabaret in New York, New York, and a lot of others. And it's it's done in a different way, and uh, I think it's a change for us after Sound of Music, which is a book musical and Singing in the Rain, a book musical. This is uh, done in a different form, and it's it's very good. Okay, now we, we know who Dorothy is. And we know who Kate, who, who does a wonderful job mm -hmm. always. Now, did, did, did I know Kate used to do civic theater before? Now, did you s discover her with civic, or did you discover her some other house? Some other um, I mean, she's I mean, she's excellent. She's, she's great. Yeah, I think when she was about eleven, she came and auditioned for Gypsy. Okay. And uh, but I, you know, I know. Yes, she's worked with Judy Johnson at MCT. I don't remember ever seeing her in anything prior to that. Okay. And she has since uh, um, worked in Grand Rapids, and she, as you know, was in a little part in Sleepless in Seattle, the mm -hmm. movie. Right. And uh, I think she has a good chance of getting to Broadway. Okay. I, I think you're right. Good. Now, um... As far as the captain goes, we, we tried to bribe Bill to get the captain's number, but he wouldn't give it to us. So oh. is there any way that possibly you can arrange it that maybe possibly the captain can give us a call? E even if it, I mean, we really like the three of us to talk to him, not just not just me. But I, I would rather have him, instead of a taped interview, if possibly all three of us could talk to him. Yeah. Well, any way I'll possible? try and arrange that. Okay. Sure. All right, that'd be great. Now, the other cast members in the with the Wizard of Oz, who plays the Cowardly Lion? That's one of Greg's favorite parts because he played uh, that. With Jimmy Spadola. <laughs> And he's from New York, and uh, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's really cute. Um, Tim Casper plays the Tin Man, 
and, and Tim has been with us for a couple years. He's also from New York. He just finished the national tour of Chorus Line. And Scott Willis from New York uh, is doing uh, the straw, what, straw Mat? Straw Mat, yeah. Scarecrow. Okay. Scarecrow, right. Now, who, who's doing all the makeup and everything? Is this uh, this is this like the heavy duty makeup? That's oh yeah, on, yeah. For the for the winkies and for the for the monkeys and for all of that, it requires a lot of witches. So there's a lot of makeup. Uh, Danny Windsor, who who has a makeup uh, company in California, who lives here, has been nice enough to you know provide us with uh, the stuff we need and right. in fact he just ordered more uh, I heard Josh, I just I just want to know when they said monkey everybody looked at me what's up with that oh, I, looked at you when he said, <laughs> I heard I heard I heard John, I heard John tried out for one of one of the monkeys and but he no, thought it was, he thought the it was the band monkeys. he didn't realize it was the monkey yeah. thing yeah. Now, they, of course you have, we, we have a lot of flying I mean uh, tomorrow morning as soon as we get the World it's goes not just round. every night after work, yeah. though. It's a lot of flying. <laughs> the world goes round, set uh, out. We have a company coming in from California called ZFX, and uh, they have to rig up uh, some a lot of equipment so we can fly like five different people and make the tornado work and all those right. kinds of things. No so, one's ever been asked to get me up. Now, how did you how did you do the, the singing in the rain thing? How, how did you make it rain on stage? You just. Uh, it was hard. We built a rain wagon, and uh, John Dupre and the uh, various people in the shop, Michael David, uh, actually built this 24-foot uh, rain wagon so that it we recirculated the water. It would it would come down and then pump be pumped back up. Uh -huh. So it would keep on raining. Okay. And um, it's uh, it w took a lot of time to get it right. No. So I sat there, my fingers crossed every day, just hoping it would work. <laughs> <laughs> now, how do you how do you go about you know you do I'm, your your crew? Have you used them for a number of years mm -hmm. now? Or okay, so you pretty much know your people and know what they can do and what they yeah. can't do. And but what happens? We use a number of uh, IATC, which is the Stagehands Union. Uh, and then some other people as well. And as West Michigan gets, uh, um, like Van Andel Arena has opened, and there's so many events now in West Michigan, it's harder and harder to find qualified people. Right. Because you have to do it for safety purposes, because if we're going to fly people in Wizard of Oz, you don't want them bumping into scenery and each other. Or so. like falling on the audience or something like right. that. Right. Yeah. Now, when the the, the play, the, getting to your the, your play that you wrote, and uh, Bill was one of the performers in this play. Yes. Now, how come he played the the vain guy? <laughs> <laughs> what a what a surprise! Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, now, uh, how come? Is, is, how many plays have you written in your in two? Your, your, oh, to two. No, have you ever performed any of your plays at? No, the I'm ball? I'm not an actor. Oh, have no, I, no. Have, have you ever had any of your plays at the at the front ball for Cherry Town? No. No, no. How, how come? I mean, they, I don't it was know. sold out. So I, just I know, curious. but I don't know. I just, uh, um, it was kind of a fluke that this one happened. I wasn't expecting it to, nor, nor did I really care. It seems like another part of my life that yeah. was a long time ago. So now, can you can you just mention a few? I mean, we've we've talked about this before, but a few. I mentioned a few of the shows that you were part of as far as writing. Um, in well, the past, yeah. Welcome back, Cotter. Too close for comfort. Silver spoons. Um, then I wrote something for GTE. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and then you that was just for John. And then rewrote it. <laughs> and then rewrote it. <laughs> you know, it's funny you think Under my duress. daughter, my daughter's a, a film editor. And so uh, she called me last week and she cut two national GTE spots. And then she had to send him to Dallas, and I said, "Don't mention my name." <laughs> <laughs> now, wait, when you when you wrote these these uh, like Welcome Back, Cotter, where of course uh, uh, John Travolta became big from mm -hmm. that and everything. Now, did you um, collaborate with uh, um, I can't think of his name, the guy that played Cotter? Um, 
Gabe Kaplan. Gabe Kaplan. Well, Gabe... That was his, his character was, originally, basically. It was he and a fellow named Eric Cohn created the show. And Gabe uh, tried to influence a lot of power. And uh, at, at a point, I think the network felt that the kids were the show right. more than... Cotter, yeah. and so they paid him thirty-two thousand five hundred dollars to stay home and not come to the show. Oh. The last year he wasn't in the show. His wife kind of played Cotter. So at times, uh, you know, he was a difficult guy, and uh, well, that explains why he's not working today. <laughs> and Travolta, I, I remember he would show up. You'd see him sitting in his car at five in the morning. Uh, learning uh, the lines for Saturday Night Fever. Uh -huh. And when he was done, you know, at 7 o'clock at night, he'd go and do five hours of dance rehearsals. Okay. I mean, he was a real committed guy, very nice. Of, of all of them, he was definitely the nicest. Okay, all right. Now, what about uh, Ricky Schroeder? Did you ever get a chance to did you meet, talk to him yeah. much on Silver Spoon? It's, it's Rick. It's uh, Rick, I'm sorry. Yeah, Rick, Rick Schroeder. Rick. Yeah, sorry. He it was told, Ricky then, now it's Rick, yes, right? Yes, when I went to that show, I said Ricky, and he says, it's Rick. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a nice enough guy. Yeah. I mean, anyway, as all the people that you've met, all the stars and celebrities supposedly that you've met, because we were trying to pass ourselves off as celebrities at the uh, yeah, right. s uh, subway the other day. Anyway, <laughs> all, the, all, the, all the celebrities that you've met in your lifetime, I mean, what, what stands out, I and mean, which, which one stands out the most? Oh, boy. Or just name a few that stand out the most. Um... I don't the the most fun uh, was for was writing some things in variety television for um, Danny Thomas and uh, uh, Sid Caesar uh, only because when I was growing up they were the stars of television so right. when they walked in and producer would say you've got to write something for them that was the most ex exciting time. Uh, but certainly, the, the nicest would be probably Travolta and Ted Knight. Ted Knight was uh, a wonderful guy. Yeah, was yeah. He? yeah terrific. Uh, now, did you write for that, that show, too? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Now, um, um, Ted passed away. How many? It's been quite a few years. Well, now. the show had been uh, picked up. This was too close for comfort for right. another two years. And uh, I remember on a Wednesday it was picked up, but on a Thursday we all went to have lunch and then he went to the doctor for his annual checkup for insurance purposes and they found uh, cancer and he was gone in six weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, it was, uh, uh, he was, everybody liked him so right. much. It, it just happened so quickly. It ha has, has to be, almost 15 years ago I yeah, was think. that the, the last television show you worked on or, or no no then I oh, Silver Spoons was it was that no. Silver Spoons was after yeah. that and then I I worked for Grant Tinker for a couple years and we did several pilots we did a a short-lived series with Dick Van Dyke uh, about coming back to his hometown where his son owned a summer stock theater okay <laughs> and uh, and then a couple other pilots Okay. Uh, okay. I'm just gonna give you a note past here to me. Um, as far as to go back to Ted Knight again, on the, it's Mary Tyler Moore show, of course, is where he, he got his. Is that where he pretty much got his yeah, start, I or think was he? What happened was there was a guy, and I can't remember his name on on Los Angeles television, who had white hair, a uh, Jerry Dumphy, and uh, he was kind of an old time newscaster. And he was kind of, kind of dumb and vain. Yeah, and yeah. and uh, um, they didn't know that that's what they wanted. But Ted Knight walked in and he did Jerry Dumphy. So they changed the character and made it that character. Okay, all right. Now, it's, it's, that was one of my favorite shows too. He played it. He played an, an artist, a comic strip artist in the in the. That was too close for too comfort. close for comfort. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, play the news guy, and, and it was always it was always fun to watch him because it, how true how, you you've been around a lot of uh, TV news and that stuff. How true is that to life as far as the anchor guy being being that way? Oh, I th maybe not so much now, yeah. but I think every city had that guy. Yeah, had a guy who uh, 
been around too long, but the public likes them so much yeah. that they last. And I know in Chicago you see it, L.A. you see it. Um, you know, now I think those positions are more glamorous, and yeah. they, yeah. they're they looking for somebody who's prettier yeah. and, and uh, um, you know, will appeal to a younger audience. So obviously we we don't have a chance here, that's guys. That's why we're doing. That's why we're, that's, that's why we're doing radio. Yeah, obviously we don't have a chance. Well, thank you, Neil, very much. And oh, uh, did you, you have, do you have any 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 uh, favorite Elvis songs you want to sing with us before you? No, done? no, I don't. Uh, I it, it gets Toto very upset. Uh, <laughs> so in fact, I had to shield his ears when you were playing Elvis before because I don't brings back I suppose he memories. Like hot memories hot yeah, <laughs> yeah. How dog might get him upset. <laughs> Now, does Toto speak on command? No. No. no okay. No, I thought we could get a little, no, a little pet, stupid speak? pet trick here. You gonna speak? Huh? Hey, you gonna lick the microphone? No, I'm just gonna snip the mic and see if it's another, <laughs> another, well, another you, dog. Guys. Don't have him lick my microphone. Thank you, Neil. <laughs> thank you, Neil. Thank you, Neil. Yeah, thanks, Neil. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Neil. And uh, we're gonna hear uh, some more from Lee now. Greg, are you going to uh, sing a song first? Uh, tonight. No, I'm gonna sing tonight. I'm gonna save our, everything for tonight. Oh, yeah. Down at Wreck is downtown the Grill. Okay, Neil, I had to, had to turn the mic up with you. I had to turn it down. But anyway, okay, you're not, you're not coming out. One Elvis tune.